cost concept. The cost concept says that all items when we purchase is to be recorded at the cost at which it is purchased. Let us say if we were going to buy, if this business is going to buy a plot of land, a plot, the worth of the plot of land is around 50 lakhs. But it so happens that the particular person selling it to us is in need of cash immediately and we are the only people who are in a position to give him cash immediately. So he offers it to us at 40 lakhs. So 50 lakhs is generally the price of the price of this land, price of the land in this area, but he is giving it to us for 40 lakhs. We buy it for 40 lakhs, record in the books at 40 lakhs, at the actual price at which it is bought, the cost at which it is bought. It is a different matter that the value of this land is now 50 lakhs and 2-3 years from now it may be worth a crore. This way the advantage is that objectivity is maintained because when I say this land is worth 50 lakhs, somebody else may think it is worth 55 lakhs and another person may think it is worth 45 lakhs. But there is no such subjectivity when we always record it at the cost at which we buy. So it's always recorded. Assets are recorded at historical cost. Having said that, cost concept therefore has its own limitations because when we draw up a balance sheet and show the worth of our business, put all our assets on one side and the liabilities on the other side, the, the, these assets and liabilities may not be reflected at their correct values. If tomorrow the business were to close down, this may not be the actual value of the asset. So today, Inflation accounting, etc. are other branches of accounting which are being introduced, which are coming up in order to overcome such limitations. But traditionally, all we, we follow the cost concept in order to maintain objectivity. 